and welcome back to the quarry garden and I'm in the middle of what used to be the spring border underneath um, some deciduous trees but we lost some of the trees following storm Arwen so this whole border is now going to get a revamp and the first thing that I'm going to do is remove and relocate some of these rhododendrons further down into the empty spaces that I've got and the reason why I'm moving these one because I need some good big shrubs and two because they've all grown into each other when I planted this border about 12 years ago now the plants were tiny little wee shrubs really really small and this is what happens after 12 years I planted them obviously a little bit too close so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to relocate some of them I've already dug some out and I'll show you in a moment but this is the next one to go because if you see if I just pull it back you can actually see more of the architecture of the plants that are either side of it. This is a lovely tall period with hundreds of flowers on the top. Now this particular shrub has gone a bit larger than what it said on the label, but I don't mind because it's a big border. But I think it'll look so much better if you can actually see each individual plant and not all of these long plants that look like they're all in a hedge rather than individual specimens. So I'm going to dig them out and I'm going to relocate them. So let me show you what I've dug out so far and where I'm going to put them. So these are the shrubs that I've dug out so far. I've got three rhododendrons and one pyrrhias. Now these spring borders are under um, deciduous trees. So obviously once the tree canopy is there from probably May onwards, um, it's pretty much a very shaded area. Very few perennials in this, uh, in these two big borders either side of the chair. And the ground here, like most of the quarry, is um, ideal for acid-loving shrubs. Hence why I have a lot of pyrrhias, rhododendrons and a few new ones that I'm going to add today. Um, not many perennials, as I said, because mainly because perennials mostly need to have good sunshine or partial shade. I am going to push the envelope a bit and add a few near the front where the trees have come out following storm orange because it does get a little bit more brightness there. So I'm going to try a few hookeras there because they do can do well in part shade. So I'm hopeful that they're going to do okay. But this is why they're spring borders because from now up until next May time, April, May time, the Duke obviously get great light. Although it's pretty dark and miserable today, hence the cap, because I've had an awful lot of rain in the last few weeks. Um, but anyhow, what I've done is I've actually marked out where I'm going to put all of these plants, but I do have a problem trying to actually get them into the ground, and I'll show you why. So no matter where I want to dig, on the top of the quarry, I'm obviously going to come across sandstone because that's what the quarry is. It's nothing but sandstone. And I only have an inch to two inches in places of soil. And a lot of it is just leaf mold from all of the trees around here. So what I need to do every time, I need to dig out, obviously, sandstone. And this is what it looks like. Big um, pieces. And the sandstone is in layers, so it is pretty easy to get out. Uh, it breaks quite easily too and more often than not I can just use a garden fork and ease it out. Sometimes it comes out with smaller pieces like this, other times you get some lovely large pieces like this which I do tend to put aside, put to one side. don't know what I'll do with it but one day I'll think of something to use it for. So and when I've done that I need to obviously add um, garden soil which I've got a big pile um, over the back here and I'll add a little bit of ericaceous com compost just to get the plants off to a good start particularly because I've been digging them out so <laughs> that's basically it so everywhere that I want to put a large specimen a large root ball it's a lot of work and I won't make you sit through that so what I'll do now is I'll show you the plants I've got to add other than the shrubs that I'm relocating so other than the rhododendrons and the pyrrhias that I've got to replant, I've also got a few of these lycosos. Now these are new to me this year. I've used one a couple of weeks ago in a wall basket. And you know, I just fall in love with the plant and I think, wow, I just love these plants. Look at the colours. And as it progressively gets colder into the winter, they just get deeper reds. Lovely, I love them. 
Um, they do tend to be more from neutral to acidic soil, hence why they'll probably do well in the quarry, quarry garden. Um, but that's just something to be mindful of if you do plant them. Obviously you could plant them in a pot, but they can grow quite big. Some of them, different varieties, can grow anything up to four feet wide and two or three feet in height. This one is Scarletta. Scarletta, and you can <laughs> obviously see by the actual, the colouring of it. So that's probably going to go round about there. And I've got several of those. And the other plant I've got to give a bit of contrast in colour, particularly this time of year, look at the colour between those two, the contrast. And this one is lime marmalade, and it's a hookera. And I'm just, as I said earlier, pushing it uh, because they do, they will take partial sun, this particular lime marmalade variety will. Some of the hookeras do like full shade, but this one in particular likes partial shade. So I will be planting it around the front. So that's if I can actually get them into the ground there. Um, so I've got several of those. And I do have a Mahonia. Um, whether I'll get that planted today, I know, I'm not sure. So let me plant everything and I'll show you what it looks like at the end. I've got a break in the weather, the sun's come out, the rain has stopped. So I thought this is a good opportunity to show you what I've managed to get planted today. So the first one is this rhododendron, which is molten gold, I do believe, this particular one. Now I've added this large shrub, and it's probably not too far away from its full size, to the front of the border because all of the shrubs are at the back and I wanted to bring some sort of structure here to the front, particularly for the winter months. This one here I've also added today, I'm not quite sure what this particular one is, uh, I've lost the label for this one, but again it's brought further, brought the border further to the front. And then I've added a third rhododendron, which I've dug out today and it's Cunningham's white and that's a smaller one, but that will grow anything to four to six feet, this one nearer the front too. And then in the centre here, I've got three of the Lycosos, which I love. They are my favourite plant of the moment. Um, they, all the plants today are evergreen, all winter hardy, down to a minus 20, minus 20. So they will survive anywhere here in the UK. The hookeras at the front managed to get those in too. Um, they do um, remain evergreen in my climate. Very rare that they actually die back, but if they do, they will certainly grow back next year from the root ball. 
So they do look good, the contrast between the two. And then I also managed to get into the back a lovely Mahonia. So I'll just walk around the back of this border and I'll show you that one too. Trying very carefully not to stand on any of the emerging spring bulbs because the snowdrops, believe it or not, are already shooting through all around this area in particular. Don't know why so early, so obviously in mild weather. All of the cyclamen have done really well since they were planted about six to eight weeks ago. And then on the bank side here is the Mahonia. Now this is a bit of a Marmite shrub. You either love it or hate it. It's often used in, as a municipal um, plant in car parks, that sort of things, parks. But I do think there is a place for it in the garden and that's because of the architecture that it brings to the garden. And I'm hoping because it's a large shrub, anything in height to 16 feet, that it will actually bring something to this very open area. It'll fill out this void at the back of the border. And this time of year it has lovely yellow flowers which are followed by um, bluey black berries later on in the winter. So the flowers do last a good couple of months. It's a lovely shrub. Whether I'll see the berries or not, I don't know, because the birds love the berries on these types of shrubs. But it's very pretty, very spiky, so be mindful of that when you're planting it. But underneath, I will add a lot of bulbs for the spring too. So that's it for part one of this um, video. Part two, I'll be adding a lot of spring bulbs and then tackling the other side of the spring borders. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon. Mm -hmm.